In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your local client, your DSS client. We are now working on DSS version 8.2.0 with the latest patch. Okay, so go to local settings. In local settings, in general, what you can change is, for example, device and channel, how to, uh, how to display uh, device information. So if we are going home, you go to monitoring center, you see over here I got NVR and I got a camera, building gate, front pharmacy and so on. Then I have some specific cameras connected directly. So this is the camera front pharmacy, right? So you need to click over here, click on the channel and pull the channel over here. Or you can just drag and drop the device. If you drag and drop the device, for example, the NVR building, you are going to show all the cameras which are connected. As you can see, this one is disconnected. So channel offline. So this is when we are showing the node and the channel numbers. Now we are going to change these basic settings because a lot of customers are complaining why they need to click and open. They just want to see the cameras itself. So click on save. The client will restart. So you need to log in again. And once you log in, this change is already visible. So you go to monitoring center. Now we don't see over here any NVR, nothing. We got directly the cameras like the front gate or the backyard, right? Everything is over, over here. Next setting. Next settings, auto run at the startup and auto login. This is very useful when you are setting up the client for central monitoring station, hotel reception, or where the clients are all the time logged in into DSS. So you can set up this and the user don't have to remember the username and the password. Then CPU alarm threshold. Sometimes you can experience the small messages over here in the corner that you are overusing your CPU. So here you can specify where you want to receive the alarm. When the CPU reach like 50%, 60, 70 and so on. So let's keep it on 70, for example. And then you will get a pop up. Auto lock client. So if you are not active, right? For a couple of minutes, you can lock your client automatically. Next settings, which we are going to, which we are going to change is in video. And here is very important. So the first default split, how you want your view in the monitoring center to be split into four or more frames. So you can choose over here. Then how the DSS should start in original scale. So that's the scale which we were choosing over here, right? At the general, or we want to show it on the full screen. So we want to show on the full screen. Then stream acquisition mode. This is very important. Okay, what are the options over here? Stream service forwarding or acquire directly, directly from the device. When we are using stream service forwarding, when we want DSS server to forward us the streams. If we want to acquire directly the streams from NVR, let's say we are sitting in a building in city A, uh, where we don't have the DSS server, but next to us is NVR. And from this NVR, we would like to retrieve the video footage. It doesn't make sense to forward all the video footage to city B and then back to city A. For us, in this case, we would choose acquire direct directly from the device. So if we are sitting next to the NVR, for example, in the same building, in the same physical building, if we are in the same physical building with the DSS server, we can ask the stream service forwarding via DSS, especially when more users are requiring the same streams as well. So this is up to the location. Where is the DSS client located? Then decoding mode, very important as well. By the default is software decoding by CPU, but if you have GPU, so you have dedicated graphical card, you can choose a decoding by GPU. So you will not occupy your CPU by decoding the images. 
it might you might be in the situation that you want to use both CPU and then GPU so really a lot of decompression uh, multiple screens and so on and so on and you have a powerful CPU so you can choose performance mode over here you can set up for example up to 50% of the CPU when, when you occupy CPU for more than 50% start using GPU or if you are occupying by 30% CPU start using GPU whatever you think I recommend something like 50% of CPU is a threshold and then starting using the GPU if you want to use the GPU something different choose directly GPU then if we are talking about using CPU and GPU for the compression of the H.264, H.265 I don't think so it's really like necessary to show the full streams of the, of the images over here in the small window as you can see right now we are decoding over here uh, 5 megapixel right over here as well this is pretty much useless because we are showing the image in really small screen What's the difference between the image if we put in the full screen or in the full resolution or substream? You can just test it if you want. So choose the substream. So here's the difference between the quality. Honestly, I think this quality is enough, especially when we have a split window like nine or so. It doesn't make sense really like to use the main stream. So one of those will be substream. Over here we got the substream. And over here we have a mainstream the quality is pretty decent moreover we don't have this texture uh, from the image we're just trying to put all those pixels in a small window right so this is enough how to achieve this this will be done automatically for you you can go to local settings and change stream switching rule by the default if we are showing less or equal to 9 we are going to have 9 full stream so for example if we got 4 megapixel camera 9 times 4 megapixel which makes 36 megapixels to decode to transfer and so on while talking about the secondary stream here will be 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.4 so we can save up to 90 percent of the resources by changing one thing just change this stream switching rule to one and then double click on the video to maximize the window and switch to the mainstream because we might be in the situation that we need the mainstream for investigation right after the change to one please click save as you can see successfully saved now we are going to open new monitoring center we will choose our camera for example from gate and you can see it's automatically in secondary stream right whatever camera we are going to place over here will be in secondary stream so no primary stream when we would like to see more details we can all the time double click on the image and it will automatically change from substream to mainstream so that's how we can save lots of bandwidth and switching back to secondary stream again so this is how easily you can work with the DSS client and save lots of bandwidth. So this is a very useful trick or setting. Don't forget to mark this option, double click on the video to maximize the window and switch to mainstream. If you wish to open your last view automatically, for example, you close the client right now, but when the client will open for the next time, you want to see exactly the same images, go over here display the previous live review after the restart so it's very useful if you close the client it will open in exactly the same way how it was closed last time okay the next thing let's say you have many monitoring centers like I have right now and you want to show this on the multiple screens as you can see everything is showing on my primary screen this is not a problem all the time just drag and drop the window now you see I have one window and second window place this second window on the other screen if you don't want to use it that way and you did it by the accident or you want to put it back just click on the option over here so to pin back and as you can see I have my monitoring center free right back 
So this is very important, especially when using multiple monitors. Instant playback time. By the default is 30 seconds. I recommend to put it like two minutes or five minutes. Why? If you are in monitoring center, for example, monitoring center three, we will put in the quad back again. Okay. You see some time over here, 1431, 1431, 1431. And we can either switch one camera to playback and the other two will be in live. So we are going two minutes backwards or we can cancel this and we can play back all the cameras. And now we see it's 32, so it will be 30. So we are going two minutes back in the playback on all of the cameras. If it's just the 30 seconds, sometimes it's too close and maybe you see something, you will tell your colleague, look over here, but then you click and then you are going on the X and you are going to move up and down. So it's really up to, up to you how you want to use it. I recommend two minutes. Okay. Then video wall settings. In the video wall settings, you can set up exactly the same thing for switching the rules or switching the streams, sorry, switching the streams. So, okay, again, you can set up on one and double click to maximize and have a full. Alarm. This is very important over here because many of you did the mistakes over here with the or uh, showing the alarms. But first thing first, you can also custom the alarm sound. So we can modify any alarm sound, for example, to your local language, if you wish. All the our player, all our sounds are in English. Let's say you want to change it to your local language. So you record one of them and then you have, for example, some alarm like panic button alarm. You can search over here. And for example, if someone pressed the panic button alarm, I will play the song. This girl is on fire. So this is up to you or you can just search for any other sounds over here on your downloads on your music or you can record some sounds. So that's how you can customize the alarm sound, of course, only for this specific workstation. And then I was telling you that this is very important. If you choose alarm uh, as a pop up, the alarm will always show on the top of the screen. But if you choose over here, open in a live view, then don't forget to do one thing in, in the view. Click on the right click and set as alarm window. You can see it got the red square. So here is the space where the alarms will show. If you don't do that, for example, you forget to select the window, the alarm will not pop up. They will not be shown on the operator screen. So if you decide to move to change this open in a live view, don't forget to set up that, uh, that option. Then if you have a map, I always recommend to turn off this notification when there is an alarm, let's blink my device on the map. Very important. So we have 20, 30 cameras on the map. The camera, which will be in alarm starts flashing on the DSS. Then we have file storage over here. You can choose where the local recordings and local images should be stored. What we are talking about the local images. For example, I would like to make a snapshot of this scene because I see something suspicious. I click over here and the snapshot was captured. I can do also local recordings and those recordings will be recorded on my DSS client. Of course, you need to have a privilege for that. You can also ban this now for your operators from the version 8.2. Once I stop the local recording, right? I can also play my local recordings over here. So no problem. I can review them anytime. Okay, next setting, what we have over here is a shortcut keys. You can use the shortcut keys for navigating or working with your PTZ camera to go to open the, for example, new window, to log the client, to move the PTZ. You can also move your PTZ. Computer gamers really like those keys to navigate. So it's up to you. If you connect USB joystick to your DSS client, this is mandatory. You need to change this. So joystick USB keyboard. So you need to change this and click save. 
otherwise you will not be able to use your PTZ joystick okay so this is like the few general things which you should think about while you are selecting or setting up your client I hope this video was helpful for you thank you for watching